where we're going to be focusing on the gains of the summit and the Obama visit. I just want to highlight uh, a few of them. These are just a few. Chase Bank Kenya has committed to lend over $580 million to entrepreneurs with small and medium-sized enterprises. It's got a focus on women and youth. That's one of the commitments. The Coca-Cola Africa Foundation will pledge $4.5 million U.S. dollars towards a new youth empowerment initiative. It's called the Yes program and uh, the Mara Foundation pledges to empower one million youths and women entrepreneurs in East Africa through the Mara Mentor platform. That's just a snapshot and we welcome our panel now to tell us so much more. Cabinet Secretary Aidan Mohammed, thank you for joining us. Leila Masharia, Vice Chair of KEPSA, great to have you with us. Sam Gishuru, CEO of <coughs> Naila, thank you. Let me start with you Aidan and um, what a remarkable few days but let's go to the outcomes yeah. for you what are the key gains for Kenya following this visit? Well, thanks, Julie. I think, the, first of all, we've had two incredible events that you know, happen at the same time. One is the Global Entrepreneurship Summit and then, of course, the visit of the President of the United mm -hmm. States. These are, you know, if we had a way of actually spreading that into two different periods to maximize on the benefit, it would have been fantastic. But so many things have happened in the mm -hmm. last two and a half days. I'll look at the visit and the summit through the lens of three broad areas. Mm -hmm. The first one is, what is it that President Obama's visit mean? What has it done for us? Mm -hmm. I think he has changed the narrative about Kenya and Africa. He's spoken many times about Kenya is on the move. Africa is rising. This is where the future is going to be looked at from the rest of the world. Right. This is the growth market. You know, he talked a lot of about the gains that we have made as a country. Free press. You know, ability for people to make things work. The progress that has been made. The commitment to corruption that President Kenyatta has actually pushed but emphasize that this is something that he cannot win and do by himself and ask the whole country to rally behind him. So that's one broad area. What does changing the narrative do for Kenya? Well, Kenya is seen by many people in the world as a country that is difficult to come. There are a significant number of travel advisories that are out there. You know, we are seen as an economy that is stagnant, that is not moving. Issues around corruption, has been there but no acknowledgement of the efforts of the progress that of the made. progress that is mm -hmm. being made mm -hmm. and it was such a refreshing moment to hear that this is not a unique Kenya problem everywhere in the world is facing similar issues it's what the leadership does about it and so we are making good move on that particular areas what are the other two areas the other two broad areas is one is some of the agreements that has been signed between the US government and Kenya. The first one is on the five-year visa program. Mm -hmm. It's something that is really exciting. Many Kenyans have been looking forward to that and that is going to happen pretty soon. The second issue is on ag agreements on security collaboration. We've had serious challenges the world has on issues of terrorism and some agreements were signed to make sure that we can collaborate even deeper and stronger on that. The other agreement was the discussion around engagement of dealing with challenges around biological problems. Mm -hmm. You know, seeing what Ebola has done, right. you know, there are issues around global biological, whether it's intention or not, warfare. What can we do as a country to be much more prepared than we are? And so, the, and the, and the third, third area, area is mm -hmm. the deals that actually happened. Mm -hmm. You know, this is... The Entrepreneurship Summit was a conference for the young entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. There were some serious commitments that were made. Steve Case, who is the founder of American Online, made some commitment about $100,000 to one of the ventures. Equity Bank signed $200 million mm -hmm. with the American OPIC. And the president announced a, you know, three global women centers, one in Kenya, one in Mali, and one in Zambia. It's incredible. A lot of things. Happen. Incredible stuff, and we're coming to more on the entrepreneurs. Uh, Leila, let's come to you. Private sector, from your perspective, what's been achieved? So for the private sector, this was a win. The, the whole, the last few days, the last week, including the pre-GES summit, have been a, a tremendous win for us. 
At uh, the Kenya Private Sector Alliance, we have something we call the National Business Agenda, which started in 2013 and will go through 2018. Mm -hmm. And within it, there's targets that we have where we work, we work along with government and with the public. Uh, we work, uh, Aidan is our line ministry, so mm -hmm. we work very closely with him as well and his ministry. But among those things is security, infrastructure rollout, the cost of energy. We look at entrepreneurship, the culture of innovation. We also look at the human cap capital development. You know, are we preparing youth that are responsible to the needs of industry and uh, the very important one one of our first pillars is also government the ease of doing business governance corruption issues but also just the red tape and the regulatory burden in the agreements that were signed uh, with the Obama administration and our own we've actually hit a lot of those areas it's been quite a triumph for us for example the agreement that was made uh, we we're not we're not sure what the details yet are but the MOUs around infrastructure development on the major projects mm -hmm. looking very keenly to see what's going to come out of that but even this progress on making sure that the the funding that's coming out into our you know especially women and youth have been great have had great wins mm -hmm. the other thing that has captured has been catalyzed by this that is a real win for the private sector is in the funding that has come through from OPIC you know we've mentioned the one that is, has come to Equity Bank there's been other commitments the Goldman Sachs Foundation uh, from the from Goldman Sachs and the 1000 women initiative in addition to that we've seen the private sector both uh, uh, from the US and also local responding to that with initiatives of their own mm. uh, Barclays Africa announced a, a supply chain challenge we've seen that village capital has made some commitments on social entrepreneurship mm -hmm. and a, a wide variety of other people who have come up Citibank uh, the city foundation has made some commitments as well as IBM all of these focusing money on women youth and startups and new enterprises and all of that is real money we can take to the bank and start to respond and roll out real businesses in our economy it, it, it brings me straight to you Sam mm -hmm. and you know young people are sitting at home going well, what does all this mean mm -hmm. well not just young people old people as well who are in business and entrepreneurs sitting going you know but what what does this mean for me? For, for those entrepreneurs who took part, what were the gains? And for those who were not in the summit, yes. how can they maybe leverage on some of these initiatives? Thank you, Julie. And just to set a, a foundation for what I do is that think of what we do as education. We have the nursery, primary, secondary, uh, university, and then we've got uh, PhDs, and after that we have um, uh, say the Nobel Peace Prize if somebody was trying to become a scientist. Now, as, uh, as Nyla, we, we play at the nursery school level. Mm -hmm. And what happened in this particular summit, we had the Nobel Peace, Peace winners in the business world come mm -hmm. to meet us and engage with us. Mm -hmm. So, absolutely, the amount of information we, we received was amazing. I mean, we were able to learn a lot about growth, about access to capital, access to markets. Mm -hmm. We were able to discuss issues of infrastructure. I mean, some of the dots we, we tried to connect that we didn't even know existed, those dots are now clear, and now we can draw a clear path mm -hmm. on the dots. Of course. So, I mean, for the entrepreneurs that were there, and, and I like what the CS Adam has said, is that they closed deals. People got orders. People got commitments. People got uh, discussions, starting mm -hmm. follow-on conversations to go on to. Uh, we got a lot of advice. Uh, we, we realized that the people were looking also for pretty big investments. They came with millions of dollars looking for billion dollar opportunities and they realize that there is opportunity here for also people who are looking for 25,000 to 150,000 type of investments. So they were able to tell us how to align ourselves to the right kind of financing. Now for the person seated at home, I'm saying first of all I realize that the infrastructure is there. We just need to communicate it more. We need to tell people you have a business here is a fund that is available mm -hmm. for you. The youth fund information, is here. Information, education, information. awareness. Yes. Right. I feel there's a, a small group of people who received a lot of information. There's a bigger group of people there that we need to democratize this information. Right. They need to know what happened, how it happened. They need to understand how useful the information is. And I believe the CS with his ministry and, and CAPS as well, they will organize events to make sure that this information reaches them. Because information is what will power us first. Mm -hmm. Because now we cannot complain about access to capital. We cannot uh, complain. I mean, there's Coca-Cola. Just the other day, Joshua Igar of KCB committed an mm -hmm. X amount of money. Mm -hmm. uh, let, me, let me add one more thing. Mm -hmm. uh, as entrepreneurs, we keep on traveling out of the country to look for funding. And for the first time, the investors came to us. Mm -hmm. Not only did they not come to us, they actually sensitized local investors on the opportunity on the ground. A and, and suddenly, we had a lot of local investors thinking, oh, there is a missing middle. All of a sudden, perspective changes. Perspective change. change. Okay. And, and they understood what we do as well because we seem to have had a communication breakdown between local investors and the startups. Let me come back to you, Aidan, with, with you know, Obama's speeches and his references to Kenya in returning make it clear that he wants to be a longer-term investor, partner, 
part of Kenya. You know, he wants to embrace this heritage. And there's so much of the Kenyan diaspora living across the globe. I know you've interacted with some of them. How do we then create a very clear path for them to come back and invest in this economy in the businesses on the ground here in Kenya. How do we do that? Well, first of all, I think if we look back 10 years from now, the legacy that President Obama would have left for Africa would be remembered. Mm -hmm. Number one, he's brought about Power Africa. It's one of the single biggest challenges that the continent faces. We'll be discussing that as well tonight. And we'll be yes. discussing that. Mm -hmm. Then there is Trade Africa. Mm -hmm. Just in the month of June, you know, through his efforts and that of his administration, we managed to get extension of AGOA by an additional 10 years. That will have significant impact on trade between the U.S. and the continent of Africa. I think then there is the leadership, the skills development, the young African leadership initiatives. And it's not only the Africans who want to go and get experience in the U.S. There are as many Americans who want to come and get experience Absolutely. on the continent of Africa. Absolutely. So this is really a two-way partnership program that needs to be done. So one of the things that we are confident about is Africa is changing. We've got the labor, the dynamics, governance, and the landscape is improving. What we now need to do is how to connect the capital that is available in the Western countries mm -hmm. to the opportunities that we have. And what is required to connect those two dots is a function like the Global Entrepreneurship Summit, where people who have the ideas, who have the opportunities, actually mingle with the people who have the capital. And we've seen in the last two days how many conversions have happened. Right. So it's something that is really inspirational, what he's been able to do for us in Kenya, on the continent and now is for us to build on that to make it happen okay I, we, we, because time is short we can come back and have you back for the diaspora conversation mm -hmm. but let me come to you Leila if you were to say to Aidan this is what we want now having achieved this over the weekend moving forward for Kepsa we'd love to see what in place okay there's a number of initiatives mm -hmm. so the first of course is we're discussing having a debrief conversation where we can really kind of consolidate the lessons learned and it would have a lot of stakeholders so that we actually decide on very concrete next steps but also make sure we do what you're saying which is democratize this information um, the other thing about it is that we really do need to carry on with some of the work we've been doing around the ease of doing business and the competitiveness of our businesses it's one thing to have capital available and to have lenders and investors saying we're interested in you but is the capacity of our entrepreneurs at the level that we want right. are they structured the right way do we know uh, that people have viable business plans and mm -hmm. approaches to execution mm -hmm. are there uh, do they have proof of concept and other such things that we can make sure are in place so that they can attract the funding and internalize it and then from there even once you've invested in businesses making sure they can become sustainable and then scalable so they have right. the real impact that we want for job creation so there's a lot of work that we want to do together to to make sure that that capacity is there to absorb these funds so that we don't have a situation where we're talking about this fund is sitting there for women or for youth and it's not being absorbed oh, and we believe the momentum is not going to be lost yes. we, we believe that yes. Sam, yes. I want you you have the last word I want you to, to, to give a word to entrepreneurs working uh, watching the show mm -hmm. um, to anybody out there who might be looking for an opportunity don't know where to start what did you learn in this summit that was an eye-opener for you that could be of help to them as well um, I think what I learned the biggest lesson was something I, I think Leila tweeted think big start small Okay. Think big, start small. small. And, and it was very powerful because, uh, and, and I want to quote Bob Collimo because he said, we should not be competing among ourselves. We should be competing with the Googles and the Apples right. of this world. Let's, mm -hmm. stop, let's stop competing at a mediocre level. Mm. Okay, let's start mm -hmm. thinking mm -hmm. about really, really big. Unless you're at Apple, Google level, you're not big. Okay, and, and that was another very big lesson. The third thing I'd say is that it does seem that a lot of the innovations, and because I'm in the innovation space, is happening within Nairobi there is need for us to decentralize this. Mm -hmm. We need this to happen in the counties. And, and I was just discussing earlier and saying, uh, let's have the governors and the county governments uh, becoming more innovative as well, innovating government, and being able to accept that they need incubation hubs, they, incub they need incubation labs and, and all this ecosystem, so that we can have a lot more ideas. Mm -hmm. If you're going to end up with, say, two Googles, ten um, Airbnbs, and such of those companies, we need to invest in thousands 
maybe even tens of thousands of companies because one out of ten is the one that becomes successful survive, right. and they, are, they have to come from all corners of this of this country so lots of work to lots do lots of work uh, to do going forward governors we hope you, we hope you've heard get involved get involved in building entrepreneurs um, in your county thank you so much to the panel for joining us uh, for this discussion um, just uh, as Leila said in terms of women the gains are remarkable and um, let's just take a look at what Obama he sa said he said women are powerhouse entrepreneurs that's how de he described them and he called for support of women in business and in education as well women have emerged big winners following this summit I think Julie what I would say is yes. you're absolutely right it's incredible to see women in technology in agriculture and in many other fields and, and achieving met, incredible things today i met a lady who is running a business called wonder that deals in biofertilizers to actually help farmers in this country improve the yields and so so many things around mm. agriculture and farming right. so incredible kenyans who have been doing a lot of things and we'll take that forward i think to see how we can make it happen that's, that's great